what what have you sacrificed in your life to have the life that you've had? Probably uh, the life that took me overseas uh, for seven years meant that I wasn't near my family, and uh, I, I'm, I lost a certain amount of opportunity, particularly with my brother, who passed away at 44. So um, I think that's something that I lost, definitely. Uh, fortunately, today, you can Skype and you can do all sorts of things to stay with your family. But in those days, we called from, Chi from Japan. We could call once a month, and it cost $10. And it was, it was not, uh, it was actually connected uh, so that if one were speaking and the other interrupted, it cut, cut, the, cut it completely. And I was so excited when I'd hear my father and my mother's voice or my brother, I just, I'd keep talking. And then, of course, it would interrupt and then we'd have to start all over again. And so, but the worst part for that was we only were allowed to speak 10 minutes. And then we had to say goodbye at the end of 10 minutes. And I think that losing touch with one's family is, even though I learned so much and had a rich, wonderful life those seven years, that I lost a lot too. Because my father, of course, died then. And my brother as well. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was, I was gonna ask. The, it was, was whatever the sacrifices that you made and that were made by you yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to ask. Well, I think it's a good, no, it is a good question. It really is because I've had many people that I've counseled when they just get married and they're going over for the first time. And they're, and as I was, um, one has ambivalent feelings. I remember in the middle of the Pacific, actually even before that, I can remember looking back as I was on the deck of the General Blackford ship, and I looked back at the San Francisco Harbor, and I saw the Golden Gate, and I thought, wow, this, I'm not going to see this for three years. And then I thought, well, that means I'm not going to see my family for three years, and oh. Uh, but then on the other hand, my bridegroom was at the other end, and so I was excited about that, and I thought, wow, I get to see him. So. You, you have these ambivalent feelings, but, but uh, all of it seems to balance eventually, especially if you get as old as I am. It does. What is your relationship to time right now in your life? There just isn't enough of it because I have so much to do every 24 hours. And so I don't think about, I don't, see, there are some people that worry about it. And they'll say, oh, how much time do I have left? I can't do it. No, what my worry is today. I do it day at a time. And this is it, and um, uh, and it's wonderful. My life is so full. It's it's really too full, but can't complain about that. Well, see, so you're you're very busy. You seem you're just always busy. I'm always busy. Tell me about that. I think it's because I've had sixteen thousand graduates. They keep you busy. Well, do they? And they they're asking me to do things all the time for one thing, and the, and then I'm on committees, and they ask me to do this, and they ask me to do that, and and uh, I actually am happy to do it. What is it that gets you out of bed and gets you going? Well, the difference is I'm having I'm enjoying myself now. See, I don't have to do those things to enjoy me, and I've been everywhere in the world practically, so uh, I don't worry about that. I do always worry about people. Because I, I do, I, this is an, actually, I, I enjoy opportunities to get to, to know new people, too. And uh, so consequently, that adds to the friends that I have. And then time, time is short. Uh, I have found that my happiness is in other people's association, not mine, others. It goes back to my philosophy. And, and I'll guarantee you that it, it will make you happy. You can't be sad. <laughs> 